swings in all of baseball this year. He passed Jimmy Fox and Mickey Mantle on the all-time home run list. He's now 11th, 11th with 541 homers from the Baltimore Orioles, Rafael Palmero. The next number, as current as anybody could be, you know the 21-year-olds in the league, and they, they now look at you tonight as good. I don't... You're not going to go out and argue against me or tell guys to pitch at me or whatever. <laughs> they can go out and say, hello, Mr. Robinson, oh, can't hello. they? Hello, Mr. Robinson. How you doing? <laughs> uh, tell him to throw the ball out over the plate. Tell me <laughs> all that stuff. Yeah. Well, here's Rafael Palmero, who uh, very, very quietly, Rafael Palmero, 541 home runs. It's hard to be quiet with 541 home runs. Although, uh, and he wears that Oriole cap proudly this well, year. The numbers speak for themselves, but as a, his personality is quiet. And this is why he doesn't get a lot of publicity. Because he's not a talker, he's not a showboat type guy. He just goes out and does the job. I remember something else you told me about Rafael. You said he's probably the greatest all-time free agent because every place he went for those five years, he put up great numbers. Well, absolutely. You look at his numbers at Baltimore. The five years he put in there, tell me any other free agent Offensive player has matched that over a five-year period of time. And then he went back to Texas. He put up great numbers. I mean, every place he's been, he has put up great numbers, right. and I agree with you. But see, it takes a guy like you that was underrated a little bit to notice right. something <laughs> like that from a guy like him. Well, Joe, so it's just I, I appreciate good performance. I appreciate good ball players, and you don't have to be a guy in the spotlight talking all the time to be appreciated by your peers. Frank, when you played. And the National League won, you know, when you first broke in with Cincinnati, won all the All-Star games because there was Willie Mays, there was Hank Aaron, there was Frank Robinson, there was Roberto Clemente. We could go on and on and on. Playing against those guys just about every night. Did that make you a better player in some ways? Did, could you watch them at all or, or you could not? Well, of course. I always watch the better players, but I also watch players, period. Because even a 250 hitter, you could pick something up from. Uh, uh, Mel Queen was an outfielder with the Reds. He came, with, uh, went on to become a pitcher. Pitcher, yep. I loved his swing. Love his mechanics, he had really? an outstanding swing. I said, boy, I really like to have that swing. I said, well, on second thought, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, now, Joe, we talked about a couple things we are going to say. I didn't think Frank Robinson was going to talk about Mel Queen's swing. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. That wasn't written down here any place. <laughs> <laughs> but you learn from watching other guys. Henry Aaron made me better. So when we played in there, I wanted to do just as well as Henry, if not better. If he had one, I wanted to hit two. If he had two, I wanted to hit three. Well, you often did. That type of thing. You that's just good, good, hard competition is what it was. You wanted to be measured with the best. And there was no greater competitor than Frank Robinson. And I can attest to that. We were from the same hometown, and I was a rookie, and he tried to kill me at second base one day. Well, Joe, you know we were taught <laughs> and, and kind of the, under the same type of system out there. And we had good uh, coaching. Is you always play hard. Play hard. Play the game fundamentally sound. Play hard. Do what you're supposed to do on the field. Everything else takes care of itself. Correct. Brian didn't talk much. That was not the time to talk. Was no. it? And I, I guess the question I would have is, you know, as a manager, is it tougher to get that over today than it was before or not? It is because the player's mentality is not to do that. Right. It's not to go into second base and take a player out. It's not to, to stick your nose in there and, and, and maybe get hit on the arm and go to first base, knowing that the pitcher's not throwing at you. Do what you have to do to help your club win a ball game. It's hard to get that across the back. Palmero, meanwhile, is doing what he has to do to move along. He's uh, with five. One more. One with more, and he's in. Well, you look at that swing. Yeah. Beautiful Smooth, swing. Smooth, right. Smooth. Little, little, very little effort. Yeah. But all it has to do to bat with the bat head speed coming through the hitting zone. It doesn't even look like it would break a sweat. Right. Beautiful swing. You know, you play down here in Texas outdoors enough. You have oh. to learn how to not sweat, oh. huh? Absolutely. <laughs> That's what's been so amazing to me about Pudge Rodriguez, the years he was with Texas. How many games he caught, how many innings he caught, and how productive he was offensively. Mm -hmm. that, that was that amazing. Is. Look at this one for Palmero, way back and gone. So not so quiet with that swing. Well, 
His back, his back speaks very loud. We all know that. <laughs> but he's a young man that's very quiet, unassuming. And very was not on the All-Star team. They said, "Gee, would you would you come?" Griffey was on the All-Star team. Bonds was on the All-Star team. Sosa's on the All-Star team. Could you also remember the 500 home run club? Would you come and play in the home run derby? Mm, let me think about it. Yes. And now what? Yes. He's gone and to work. Nice. Right. And that's that was a good decision on his part. Yep. Also. Well, I'm sure he's pinching himself being with. Did he visit with you guys at all? I mean, did he have a chance? To for a short period of time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's probably the one thing about it. It's a little hectic and your time you're always moving there rather than having some time to spend talking to each other. You know I have to tell you Frank after seeing all you great players out there today. I'm a little mad at myself because I didn't go for the home run a little more often. Well, Joe, you know I talked to you when I had you in San Francisco about that very thing. Hey, I need hey, I needed about 300 more. I could have been out there with you. Now, yeah. I tell you what, you stayed within yourself. Right. Well, I did. Uh, you know, you wasn't a big home run right. hitter, but you've got a lot of big home runs Thank in you. your career. But no, I, I had a good time. <laughs> Now look, at, look at Rafi. Meanwhile, he's got the most in this round. And he's found that little spot about 12 feet in from the pole, maybe about 15, and he's just going to pepper it. Uh, very smart hitter. Very smart. Oh, oh he was, that one was a shot. At, uh, look, take a shot at me. <laughs> yeah. Tell him we're praising him, not giving him a hard time. <laughs> You know, I have to say this per, from a personal standpoint, it was always an honor for me to be able to play for an African American manager. You know, obviously you were the first African American manager, but I think all of us deep down inside wish we could have played, you know, for an African American manager. I'm sure you wish the same thing, and I had the opportunity to do so, and truthfully, that was, you know, a highlight for me. Of my although, career. although I would have liked to have had you 10 or 15 years earlier. Yeah, well, that's true, too. <laughs> Yeah, that's true too. But, but it was still good. Yeah, it was good. I, I got that chance, and it was, it was it's still it's still one at the top of one of my my list there. Well, I, I tell you, and I've told you before, you and Reggie Smith got that team to understand what winning was all about. Well, that's it for this at bat for Palmero, but Rafi has the most in the first round with nine. And he's going to be moving on. How about that? 541 home runs. These aren't by accident. And here's that swing that Frank and you were discussing, yeah. Joe. You he's looking forward to getting pitched to two or three times tomorrow night. <laughs> but he says, Joe's not going to pitch to me, <laughs> Tori. And now here's Rafael Palmero, as sweet a swing as Tejada has. How about Frank talking about Palmero when he was on before? Yeah, but it's still more difficult to hit the ball out to right field than it is to left field, so he is at a disadvantage. And that's. In the first round. 11th on the all time home run list, Rafael Palmero. He's climbing up top 20 and 25 in a lot of lists, Joe. I mean, he's. We talked about some of the guys that you get overlooked a little bit. Top 20 all time slugging percentage. He's uh, over 2,800 hits, so uh, moving in the top 40 on the hit parade. He's in the top 17 of doubles. And not to mention, 11th on the home run list with 541. I mean, you wouldn't know that. But I mean, until you look all those up with Palmer. Well, it's like Frank said, he's, he does his job quietly, but he gets the job done. Yeah, he also had a run. Ooh. Each of the last nine years, 38 or more home runs. That's nine years in a row. That's well, that's one of the things impressive. it takes to get to 500. Yeah. <laughs> I understand. Yeah, I think a lot of people don't even realize, I mean, if you hit 40 home runs a year for 10 years, you still do not make it. Right. You still need another 100 home, uh, home runs. Ooh. Well, that'll 
cost us about forty thousand bucks, huh? <laughs> there goes the camera. Here it is. Watch this. Strong and camera. It's still, it's still working. working. Yeah. <laughs> God, what kind of lens do we have there? Well, Rafi needs to get moving. He knows that. Of course, it's tough when you say, geez, I need 10. Right, Joe? Boy, I need 10. Definitely. I mean, they raised the bar very high for him to start with. A high up drive to right field. Here it is. Here's a two spot. Palmero trying to wait for his pitch. He got it. Yeah, he did. Way back in right center and gone. So it looks like that was just an easy swing. Well, that was a long try. I think if you pay close attention to all of these hitters, they're not jumping at the ball. They're making smooth swings. And I think that's one of the nuances of the swings today. I mean, a lot of these guys are so strong that they're just making nice contact and the ball jumps. And another reason is I think they use lighter bats today than say when Frank Robinson used to hit. Frank used it, yeah, Frank Robinson used 36 inch, 36 ounce bat. And now most of the guys use 34 inch, 31, 32 ounce bat. Why the difference? Well, because they want to be quicker rather than stronger. I mean, the, the, if they wait a little bit longer, if they can generate a little bit more bat speed, they're not as easily fooled on breaking balls. The longer you can wait, the better hitter you are. And that's the reason that Barry Bonds is such a great hitter, because he can wait so long. And he has such a short, quick swing. How about those maple and the hardened bats? Do well, they make a difference? Yeah, I think the bats are harder, and also I think the balls are harder, and the ballparks are smaller. I mean, that's one of the distinctions in the, in the of the game today as compared to when, you know, say, Frank Robinson was playing or Harmon Killable. <laughs> Long drive to right field, and it's back and gone. Upper deck. So don't count him out yet. Lance Berkman getting the gloves ready, but not assured yet. Palmero! He's halfway there. Towns going, well, gee, one out, and we get Berkman in the finals. <laughs> but it is, I just think a classy move for saying, you know what, not only will I come as a member of the finals, but I'm going to participate, even though I'm not an all star. Great classy move, a classy guy with a great career that's continuing. Rafael Palmero. Good job, Rafi. He will make the final.